Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to remove the rear sprockets on bicycle wheels. So there are two common styles of rear sprocket systems on bicycle wheels. This wheel has what's called the free hub and cassette type of system, which is typically found on newer and higher end bicycles. This wheel has what's called a free hub type of system, which is typically found on older and lower end bicycles. The vast majority of bicycles in use today use one of these two systems, and I'll be covering both of them in this video. Removing the rear sprockets from a bicycle wheel is a useful skill to have. It will enable you to swap between different sprocket sets, and it's also helpful for making it easier to clean this part of the bike. There are also other maintenance tasks, such as changing a broken spoke, where removing the sprockets is one of the required steps. Let's get started by learning how to identify whether your rear wheel uses the freewheel type of system or the free hub and cassette type of system. A common trait that both these systems share is that if you look on the inside of the smallest sprocket, you should see either splines or notches. This one has splines, this one does too. This one also has splines, but they're smaller. This one on the other hand has notches and there's four of them. And here's an example of one which has two notches. Whichever style yours has, the trick is to spin the sprockets counterclockwise like this and watch to see if the splines or notches rotate too when you do that. If you do see the splines or notches moving like on this wheel, then you have a free hub and cassette system. However, if you see them stay stationary, like I'm seeing on this wheel, then you have a free wheel system. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm going to start by covering free wheels, so if your bike has a free hub and cassette, feel free to jump ahead in the video. So this here is a free wheel, and on the inside of it there are threads, which get screwed directly onto these threads on the corresponding hub by rotating in the clockwise direction. Now intuitively you might expect that to take this back off, you would just simply need to rotate this in the counterclockwise direction. However, if you try that, you'll find that this will just spin forever, and that's because there's a ratcheting mechanism inside here, which only allows it to rotate in one direction. The trick for removing this is to use a special tool called the freewheel remover, which can reach to the inside of this and allow you to rotate the entire thing off in the counterclockwise direction, and therefore take this back off again. Unfortunately, freewheels have not been very well standardized over the years, which means that different freewheels use different freewheel remover tools. Most bicycle shops have a wide range of these tools available, so my advice is for you to take your wheel with you to your local bike shop and let them help you choose the correct tool which will fit the freewheel for your bike. So now that we understand how freewheels work, I'll demonstrate how to remove one from an actual bike. I'll start by removing the rear wheel. If you're unfamiliar with how to do this, I have a video that I've linked in the description below which will teach you everything that you need to know. This particular freewheel uses the FR1 freewheel remover tool from Park Tool, but before I install this into there, I need to remove this wheel nut the rest of the way. With that off, I can now insert the tool, just as I've demonstrated earlier in the video. The manufacturer that makes these tools recommends that after you've installed them, that you then put your wheel nut back on over top, which will ensure that the tool stays fully engaged when you're doing the next step. You don't want to tighten this on tight though, you want to leave it so there's a little bit of a gap between the nut and the tool, which will allow the tool to still rotate. In a similar way, if you're doing this on a wheel which has a quick release, you want to remove this end of the skewer by holding this one stationary and rotating this one off, being careful to catch any springs that might go flying. After you've got your freewheel remover tool installed, you can put the end of that skewer back on loosely. With the tool installed, Removing the freewheel is a matter of rotating this in the counterclockwise direction, but it's very unlikely that you'd be able to do this with just your bare hands. Typically, freewheels become very tightly fastened onto the wheel because whenever the bike is being pedaled, the chain is constantly applying a tightening torque onto it. But to counteract that torque, we can put a wrench onto the tool to get more leverage. To begin with, take the wheel and place it in front of you with the freewheel facing out and leaning it up against your knees like this. Take your left hand and place it at approximately the two o'clock position on the wheel, then take the wrench in your other hand, place it onto the freewheel tool so that it ends up at approximately the 10 o'clock position. Now with both hands, you wanna press down as hard as you possibly can. This will work some of the time, 
But if yours is too tight to break free like mine is, try this trick. Place the wheel against a sturdy wall, position the wrench at the 9 o'clock position, and press down on it as hard as you can by applying your body weight. If it's really tight, you can also try stepping on the end of the wrench with your foot. Once the freewheel has been initially broken free, you can remove the wheel nut again, and then continue to thread the freewheel tool off the rest of the way with your fingers. Once you reach the end of the threads, you'll be able to just pull this straight off like this. Underneath the freewheels on some wheels, there's one of these discs, which is called a spoke protector, which can just simply be lifted off like this. The wrench that I chose for doing this is a one inch combination wrench with a box end, which fits this freewheel tool. Since the forces for removing a freewheel can be quite high, this is the ideal tool for the job. In most cases, a small adjustable wrench like this one won't be sufficient, since it doesn't offer enough leverage. I also don't recommend using a large adjustable wrench either. The main advantage of the box end over the adjustable is that this can grip the tool on six different points, where the adjustable can only grip the tool on two faces. If you have a very tight freewheel to remove, and you try using this method, there's a good chance that your freewheel tool will start looking like this one. Another option instead of using a wrench is to use a bench vise like this one. The freewheel tool gets inserted like this and then tightly fastened inside the vise. Now to remove the freewheel, simply spin the wheel in the counterclockwise direction. Whichever method that you used, the result is that you've now removed the rear sprockets from your bicycle, which is the goal of this video. While you have this off the wheel, it's a good idea to clean the threads of both parts and apply some grease to help make it easier to remove next time. I use white lithium grease for most bicycle related applications, but there are other types of grease which will work equally well. After putting the spoke protector back in place, reinstalling the freewheel back onto the bike is extremely straightforward. Carefully align the threads and rotate the freewheel on in the clockwise direction. This only needs to be installed so that it's finger tight, because as soon as you start pedaling the bike again, the freewheel will get tightened the rest of the way by the tension from the chain. Now let's move on to rear wheels that use the free hub and cassette type system. On this type of system, the rear sprocket clusters are known as cassettes, and the ratcheting mechanism is built inside of this part, which is called the free hub. On the inside of the cassette there are notches, which match up with the notches on the outside of the free hub, so this slides on here like this. The cassette is held in place by a piece that looks like this, called a lock ring, which gets threaded into the end of the free hub. There's a special tool called the cassette lock ring tool, which has splines that match the splines on the inside of the lock ring, and this gets inserted in here like that. The lock ring threads on in the clockwise direction, but if you try to unthread it by rotating in the opposite direction, you'll find that the cassette will spin with it because of the ratcheting mechanism inside. I could just keep spinning this forever, and that lock ring would never come off. The trick is that you need to first hold the cassette stationary, and then spin the tool in that direction. Now on a real wheel which is actually in use, the lock ring would normally be a lot tighter than that, and you wouldn't be able to hold the cassette stationary simply by gripping onto the sprockets with your bare hands. There's a tool called the chain whip, which is specifically designed for this purpose. It's a very simple tool, just a metal bar with a couple of pieces of chain connected to it, and it's designed so that the pieces of chain can wrap around one of the sprockets, and you can use that for holding the cassette stationary. So now that we understand how free hubs and cassettes work, I'll demonstrate how to remove the cassette from this bike. I'll start by taking off the rear wheel. If you're unfamiliar with how to remove the rear wheel from a bicycle, I have a link to a video in the description which will teach you everything you need to know. So this wheel was held onto the bike by a quick release, and the first step for removing the cassette is to take off this end of the quick release, because right now it's in the way of where the lock ring tool needs to go. To take it off, I put one hand on this end of the quick release, and then I take the other hand and I can rotate this off. When I reach the end of the threads, I have to be careful to make sure that I also capture the spring that goes with it. With the quick release removed, I can then take my lock ring tool and insert it into the splines of the lock ring. Now the manufacturer that makes this tool recommends that after you've inserted this, that you put the end of the quick release back on, because that will ensure that this tool will stay fully engaged when you're doing the next step. 
However, you only want to install this loosely on there because this tool still needs to be able to spin. So now I take the wheel and I place it in front of me like that with the cassette facing outwards. In my left hand I then take the chain whip and I take this part of the chain and I place it up against one of the sprockets over here on this side. I then take the remaining dangling piece of chain and I wrap it the rest of the way around that same sprocket. In this case I've used one of the middle sprockets of this cassette but this tool is designed to work with any of the sprockets. I then take a one inch wrench in my other hand and I install it onto the lock ring tool. I typically prefer to do this so that the chain whip ends up over here at the two o'clock position and the lock ring tool ends up over here at approximately the 10 o'clock position. I then press down with both of my hands. So now that the lock ring's been initially broken free, I can take off this end of the quick release again. Now holding onto the cassette with one hand, I can rotate this tool off the rest of the way. And there that lock ring's removed. And if you look on the inside of it, you can see some ridges, and that's why it made a clicking sound when I was breaking it free with the wrench. With the lock ring removed, I can pull this cassette off like this, and I've successfully removed the rear sprockets from this wheel, which is the goal of this video. On this cassette, all the sprockets are clustered together, with the exception of the smallest one, which is separate. If I flip this over, I can see on the back that all these sprockets are riveted together, which means that this is not designed to be taken apart further. On this cassette from another bike, however, the two smallest sprockets are separate, and if I flip this over, I can see that these are held together by a tiny bolt, which means that if I want to take this apart further for cleaning it, or for swapping out the individual sprockets, I'm able to do that. These sort of details will vary from one cassette to another. Another thing to be aware of is that all the notches on the free hub are the same, with the exception of one, which is smaller. The cassette has the same pattern, with one slot which is smaller than all the others, which means that this can only be installed one way on there, so I need to line up that smaller slot with the smaller notch, like so. I also have to do the same with the small outer sprocket, which has its small slot right there. Before reinstalling the lock ring, it's a good idea to clean the threads of the lock ring, as well as the threads that are on the inside of the free hub, which I do by wrapping a rag around the end of a small screwdriver. To help make it easier to remove this next time, I'm going to also apply some grease to these threads. Now the lock ring can get installed back into the end of the free hub, and the lock ring tool can be used to tighten it up. So just like before I've installed the end of the quick release on here to help keep the tool engaged, and now I can install my wrench on here and tighten this up the rest of the way. Now this is not something that needs to be extremely tight, it only needs a medium amount of tension, so I find that doing it from a position like this is just fine. This lock ring actually says on it that the recommended amount of torque is 40 newton meters, so if you have a torque wrench, you can set it exactly to that. But if you don't have a torque wrench, to help give you a sense of how tight the lock ring needs to be, 40 newton meters works out to approximately 30 foot pounds, and this wrench is one foot long, so that means I would only need to apply a 30 pound weight to the end of it to get this sufficiently tight. If I put any more weight on there, then I would be over tightening it. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial showing how to remove the rear sprockets from bicycle wheels. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.